up, people. This is part two in my series on creative crossovers where I examine some things from one creative field that might just offer some new perspectives on another one. So today, I would like to discuss some things from the world of photography that might help you be a better musician. Along the way, I'd like to feature the work of Ted Forbes over at The Art of Photography. If you're a photographer, you've probably heard of him. But if you're a musician and you just want to learn more about how photographers see their art, his channel is excellent. Now that would make a good summer barbecue beer. So the first concept I'd like to get into from the world of photography is just the idea of working the subject. The idea is not just to go with your first idea, but to move around and spend a little time and to try different things and to see if something else emerges. But how much do we as musicians try working the subject? Do we try the new song that we're working out in different styles and different keys to see what fits? Or do we just go with the first impulse, the first idea that we had in our head and build from there? Are we allowing the necessary room for happy accidents to come in and mutate our process and change things up a little bit? Maybe next time you have a great initial idea for a song, try working it a little bit. Try different perspectives, try different instruments, alter the melody, try different keys, whatever it takes. Don't just stick with the first idea that came to you. Try working it a little bit and see what else you can come up with before you commit. If you want to see how a photographer works the subject, the best book I can think of is Magnum Contact Sheets. By seeing the contact sheets of these great photographers, you can see the shots that didn't make the cut, the shots that led up to the shot that did make the cut. You can see some of their first impressions and where they decided to go a different direction. It's a really great book and it gets you thinking about whether or not you should go with that first impulse or if you might gain something out of working the subject a little bit. So the next concept that photographers, especially landscape photographers, tend to focus on is creating depth through different layers. Some photographers always want to have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background so that you have relative metrics as to how deep the scene is. I mean, if you just take like a wide landscape image and there's nothing in the foreground, it all tends to look a little flat. You can't tell how far away they, or how big things are. But if you put a recognizable tree or some kind of object or a rock in the foreground and you can see relative to a person how big it is, it adds a whole dimension of depth to the photograph. And then things like atmospheric conditions and whatnot make the, the further away stuff maybe look a little lighter, a little darker depending, and maybe it's a little less out of focus and the focus crisper up front. By having different forms of contrast between the foreground, middle ground, background. You put the viewer into the scene, they can feel a little bit better what it was like to be there. Musicians though, we have this tendency to try to balance everything, to try to be really egalitarian with each instrument in a song. Everything clear and focused and upfront and sounding like the best version of itself. Which is great when those instruments are in solo, but when you put all of that together, they just tend to compete. But what if you actually thought while you're writing or arranging a song and putting it together of these different layers? What if you had your melodic instruments had maybe a little more high end on them and they were a little bit more clear and up front and then your rhythmic elements did a middle ground that didn't compete but rather supported the melody that was happening? And then maybe behind that your pad sounds, your chordal sounds, keyboards, strings, whatever it might be depending on the kind of music that you make are a little bit more set back, a little bit more washed out, and maybe they have all of the low end. And if you think about each musical layer receding back and you treat it accordingly, you can create a really deep atmosphere for your song. I'm sure most of you, even if you're not photographers, have heard of Ansel Adams, but take another look at his work, and this time think about the different ways that he creates a sense of depth. All right, so another concept that photographers are talking about and dealing with all the time is dynamic range. When you're taking a photograph, you have to factor in the dynamic range of the image, the dynamic range of the film or sensor that you're shooting on, the dynamic range of the medium that you're going to work in. And for those of you that 
aren't from the photography world and don't deal with dynamic range, it's basically the amount of information between the darkest and the lightest value. So on a sunny day with direct sun, the shadows are going to be very dark, the highlights are going to be very bright, and you can't fit all of that into the image. You have to make some adjustments and some sacrifices and balance some things until you get something that's going to be usable in the end medium, whether that be a print or a book or online or whatever. Beyond just getting a good wide dynamic range on an image, another thing that photographers do all the time is limit the dynamic range to intentionally create an effect. For example, in a high key image, you'll see that there is generally a lot of bright information. And if there's darks, they're very far away and the middle grays tend to be sort of missing from the equation. Or in a low key image, very few parts of the image are actually bright and maybe it all fades into darkness or maybe it just all kind of hangs out in the middle range there. The point is, is that by limiting the dynamic range in creative ways, you can create different moods. Your high key images might look a little bit more edgy. Sometimes low key images tend to look a little bit more dramatic. But again, musicians tend to try to set up their instruments to have the lowest low and the highest high in each instrument. And a recordist might try to get the broadest range to play with and just roll off frequencies that compete with other frequencies. But there are a few different dynamics that you can play with in a song. You can play with how loud or quiet things are. You can take off the higher, the low, or the middle frequencies to get unique sounds that have a sort of a mood and a feel to them. What happens if instead of compressing your song down the whole time, you have sections where the quiet parts are really quiet and the loud parts are really loud? Maybe that's not a fit for everything, but you wouldn't know just from reading it on paper if you didn't actually play around with these concepts. What if you start your song without any bass frequencies and then kick them in? What does that feel like? Where do those frequencies hit you in your body? By using and working with the entire dynamic range of your frequency spectrum, of your volume, you're just giving yourself more emotional range to play with in your music in the end. So another way that a photographer or any visual artist for that matter can make a subject have more impact is to surround it with a lot of negative space. Negative space is really just the space that's around or between the subjects of the photograph. Strong negative space will contrast the subject. So if the subject is very dark, the space around them will be very light. If the subject is very sharp, the negative space will be very soft or blurred out. If the subject is very flat and solid, maybe the negative space is textured and full of detail. Maybe the best way to get a melody to stand out is to have silence around it. Or maybe it's not silence. Maybe everything else is just a little bit set back further away, a little bit softer, a little bit quieter. Maybe the melody's bright and everything else is a little bit darker. These are the kind of contrasts much like in the depth example we were talking about before, that really can pull the focus to what you want the viewer to see, or in the case of music, the listener to hear. Think about the subject of the song at a given moment and the different qualities that it has and reverse those qualities for everything else to help it stand out. This might just be a good approach if you're trying to fix a melody that's drowning into the mix somehow. The last concept with photography that I think would help you out in your music is to think of the lens as the viewer, or in your case, the microphone as the listener. I think one could argue that the lens is the most important thing in the camera's signal chain. It has the biggest effect on the viewer. It provides context and a standpoint. A lens of a different focal length can either make you feel more intimate or more detached from the subject. Where you position the lens is where the viewer sees the image from. I know that sounds really obvious, but I don't think a lot of people really think of it this way. You're sharing an experience and the standpoint and the way that you see it, this, the lens and the position of the lens and the type of the lens and the focal length, this has everything to do with how you feel about the image and it's usually even on a subconscious level. 
So maybe try experimenting when you're recording your music with your microphone position. Think about it more like a person or the listener that's on the other end. Are they standing in the middle of the band and just charged up and energetic right along with them? Or are they in the back of the concert hall letting waves of sound kind of cascade over them? When a photographer's thinking about what lens to use, one of the first things they think about is focal length. And the focal length of the lens is going to tell how much field of view that that lens has. Is it focused very much straight ahead and zoomed in like a 100 or a 400 millimeter lens? Or is it very wide like a 16 or 20 millimeter lens or a 10 millimeter fisheye kind of creates this view that wraps all around you? And there's pros and cons to each one. They all evoke a different feeling. But when I was learning to record, it seemed like people always said, use this kind of mic in this position with this instrument. And if you want to mic the drum kit, you need your overheads like this and your bass drum mic like this and your snare mic like this. And sure, you can get some great recordings that way, but you don't get anything really unique. And you may not realize this if you've never played around with it, but moving the microphone around has just as much, if not more, effect than all of the plugins and stuff that you're gonna put on it later. If you're looking for a closer, more intimate sound, imagine where somebody would sit in that setting. Maybe choose your mic. Do you want an Omni mic or a cardioid or a hypercardioid or a shotgun? Try to think about exactly how focused you want that sound and exactly what you want the listener to hear. It seems so obvious, but thinking about your microphone as if it were your listener's head can put you in another creative mindset that can really add another dimension to your music. All right, thanks as always for hanging out with me, you guys. I hope that this has given you some kind of new perspective on your music. If you'd like to learn more about these concepts or photography in general, go check out Ted Forbes at The Art of Photography. He teaches the fundamentals of photography, but he focuses heavily on other photographers and sharing their work and his insights on them. His artist series is particularly fantastic, so I will link that series and more down in the description below. If you liked this video, subscribe if you aren't already and make sure that you catch the rest of this series and all the videos that I do on creativity and art and developing yourself as an artist. If you really like this video, share it in your favorite creative circles and help me spread the word about what I'm doing here. All right, till next time, peace.